Hey everybody, good evening. Are we ready to terrazzo? Welcome to the next session. This is session two of our terrazzo knit along, the sweater designed by Petite Knits that we all love so much. My name is Ellen Lewis with Crazy For You Yarns and I am so glad that you are here. We have a bunch of folks joining us tonight. A lot of you guys are doing the terrazzo and if you're new, absolutely welcome. It's not too late. This is all recorded on YouTube. And if you missed the first session or the promo that Whitney and I did looking at all of the different colors, please go back and watch those. Like I said, they will be here. It is never too late to join. I have been knitting like crazy and I'm still behind. I thought, oh, I'm going to do two. I was so smart, right? <laughs> what was I thinking? Tell me where you are, guys. Tell me in the chat how you guys are doing. Hey, everybody. Hey, Eveline and Susie and Sandy and Amy and Whitney and Rita. Yay. I'm so happy you're here. Hi, Zen Fu and, and Mary. Oh, my goodness. Wonderful to see you guys. Wonderful to see you. So tell me where you are in the chat. I will tell you where I am on my, on my first one. So... This is the first one that I was doing. I showed you last week, and I'm just about at the place where you divide for the sleeves. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about this. So you guys know that I'm not a top-down girl. It's just not my thing, never has been. I've never really liked the, the raglan line, and it just... It just bugs me. But I got to tell you, this method of petite knits, the way she's doing it, is really growing on me. It doesn't feel like a raglan. It isn't. Um, not all the way. In fact, I think I said last time, this reminds me a lot of the cocoa knits kind of construction where you have stitches on the front and the back kind of growing out of your shoulder saddle. It's not the exact same as Coco Knits. It's clearly very different, but it does begin to simulate a set-in sleeve, which I think is super cool. I love that. So I'm very excited about it, and I'm anxious to do another one. So be thinking about what we should do next, whether we should do another Petite Knits or whether we should try some other kind of, kind of sweater. So I'd be anxious to hear what you have to say. Okay, so let's see where everybody is. All right. Whitney is in the raglan increases. Okay, Sandy's already in the body. You speedy girl. Uh, Susie. Hey, Julie. Okay, Amy is two inches past the divide. Hi, Liz. Nice to see you. Halfway through the raglan increases. Oh, my goodness. Hey. Okay, just before the body. Okay, so we're all kind of in the same, in the same spot. Um, I know that I had only said that you needed to get to the place where you would join in the round this time. Um, I think most of you already know how to do that, but I did want to kind of go over it for the replay in case anybody is looking at this. I also wanted to point out something that Susie brought to my attention, and that is if you are making the smallest size, there is a typo in that section where you are joining for joining in the round and the next stitches. Has anybody come across that? Tell me in the chat if you saw that. Um, all I'm, I'm going to bring my pattern up. So all of the um, all of the pattern sizes talk about you know some number larger than ten to cast on here when you're joining it in the round. Like for my size, I think it was sixteen, and for suit and for Susie's, it was five. And she's doing that and she texted me and she said, I've, well, I've done something wrong, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so there is a typo there at that point for joining in the round only in the smallest size. It's, it's not supposed to be five, but it's supposed to be 15 instead. So um, I'm sure that if you're making the smallest size, you already figured that out or you um, checked Ravelry or something or sent me a text <laughs> to let me know. So anybody making the smallest size run across that yet? I know that my um, my sweet Colleen is probably going to make the smallest size. So if you're watching Colleen, I want to make sure that you pay attention to that. It's not you. You're not wrong. There is a typo. All right, let's see. 
Uh, yes, where it says you should have done three sets of increases. Okay, was there was there a problem there, Whitney? I haven't looked at that, so you and Susie will have to talk about that um, or just bring it up, put it in the chat so that I know where you're talking about there being an issue. Okay, Is, are you making the smallest size? So tell me in the chat if you're making the smallest size and then I'll know. Or I can bring you up if you want to. Um, if anybody wants to come online with me and be in on stage, as it were, uh, you can you can click that link that I just put in the chat and I will bring you up. So super fun. All right. Whitney, I might, I might ask you to come up so we can talk about that. I just want to make sure that everybody is clear on, on what that issue was for the smallest size if we need to. So um, while we're thinking about that a little bit, I also wanted to talk about how you're going to do those cast on stitches when you're joining in the round. Because what's happening is if you were knitting this sweater bottom up, Basically, you would be working the front and then you would be doing those bind off stitches for your preliminary, the bottom of your neckline, and then you would be doing some decreases to continue to shape the neckline. So on the sweater that I have here, you've got some bound off stitches and then you have some stitches that are decreased going up to the neckline. So obviously working top down, you're doing increases at the neckline and then you have to cast on those extra stitches right there. So um, if you have not done that, if you have not cast on your stitches and you're at all concerned about that, or you don't know how to do the E-wrap cast on or the thumb cast on, um, I want to show you how to do that. And I also want to show you my little trick that I use for joining things in the round so that um, you don't get a gap. There are two, two aspects. One is the actual joining in the round. So what I do is I will cast on one extra stitch, one stitch more than I'm supposed to be casting on for joining in the round, like for mine, I think it was 16. I cast on 17 stitches, and then I slipped that extra stitch that I cast on over to my left needle, and I knit the two of them together. And that joins the stitches that you've just cast on to the remainder of your stitches in the body of the fabric, and it keeps it from getting that wonky little drop um, that you often get when you are working in the round and you're just joining. Tell me if you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you do. If you've ever knit a hat, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the other thing that, that sometimes happens when you're doing a thumb cast on is those stitches are just a loop of yarn, right? And they are, they are very, it's very easy for them to collapse. You know, so what um, Julie Weisenberger does for Coco Knits is she casts on two fewer stitches than you're supposed to cast on. And then when she's coming around again, she picks up and does a make one before and after those stitches that she's cast on, which is kind of cool. And that's something that you can do. Um, let's see. I'm going to have to rip back and join. Oh no. Okay. I did five. Yep. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, Whitney. <laughs> that is very frustrating, isn't it? Yep. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll make an additional video and I will post it in between video one and two, just to kind of talk about that little typo and maybe do these kinds of things that um, I'm talking about right here. Just for the replay. Um, is anybody interested in seeing the thumb cast on? You all know how to do that, right? Let me just go ahead and show you anyway, since I'm all set up here. Let's see if this will work for you. Okay, so if we are casting on additional stitches, so we are going to, we would be, I'm pretending we're going to join this one in the round. So we would cast on additional stitches. And the way I do that is you just grab the yarn, like make like you're a hitchhiker, grab the yarn here, and then wrap your thumb around. So it makes a loop around your thumb. You're just gonna go casting on. Oh, 
All right. So this is super easy. This is the easiest cast on you can do. It's not necessarily the easiest cast on to knit if you're a beginner, but it's a nice flexible cast on when you need to cast on in the middle of the row. So it has its purposes for sure. Okay, so now I've cast on a bunch of extra stitches and I'm gonna cast on one extra right here. So now when I go to join this in the round, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that extra stitch that I cast on and move it over to my left needle. And now I am going to, this is the extra stitch that I cast on, and this is this, the first stitch from my fabric that I'm joining. I'm just going to work those two together. That makes a super nice, clean join. You'll never see it, and it keeps you from having any wonky bit right here. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to knit around this little bit that I have, this little sample that I have in the round, and I will show you what I'm talking about doing that, that um, make one into the, to the loose bit of our, our cast on in the middle of the row. I, like I said, I learned that from Julie Weisenberger doing the cocoa knits, and any of you who've done the cocoa knits have, have probably done this as well. You don't have to do this. If you can keep your needles really close together, then, then those stitches don't collapse, you know? But if, if you, you end up knitting and you, you make a stitch and you go like, like that, you know, the stitches are definitely gonna, gonna collapse. So that's why you would need to do that. But this has been fun, right? I have had a great time making this. Anne had a comment that she loves the fabric. Yeah, I love the fabric too. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I, I am excited about it, which is why I'm making two. <laughs> All right. So tell me what else is going on, everybody. I just finished an interesting um, book. Any of you read um, Bear Town or A Man Called um, Uva or Ova, Ove? I'm not sure exactly how you say his name, but I just finished another book by him and it's truly quite wonderful. It was called Anxious People. Tell me if you've read that. Yes, I am making two at the same time. <laughs> I'm insane, that's why. <laughs> All right, so let me put this on camera again. Okay, so here I am coming up to the place where I have those extra stitches that I cast on in joining. Yeah, okay, so, so do you see that big gap that we get um, where, we've, where we've cast on? It just happens. So what Julie suggests is that you just bring that up and make, a, make one into that stitch, right? So like if your pattern called for you to cast on 16 stitches, you would cast on 14, and then you would make this extra stitch before work across and then do that same thing again afterwards. So that's one way to avoid having, um, having that gap at the, at the place where you're casting on those stitches in the middle of the row. Like I said, it's very easy. If you keep your needles close together, it's very easy to avoid the stitches collapsing, but you know, it really all depends on how you knit and what you're comfortable with. So it's nice to know that there are solutions to all of these kinds of problems that that come up so good yes the other thing we were going to talk about tonight is um, taking off those stitches and it's a similar kind of process but 
removing the sleeve stitches and then cast rejoining and casting on stitches for underneath. So any of you who have done anything in the round, you know that, that this is what happens. You build this whole body of fabric to your underarm and then you take the sleeve stitches off and you continue around with just the body joining, you know, adding stitches, casting on additional stitches to, um, to continue that and to make up for the stitches that you've taken off from your sleeve. Does that make sense? So I'm, I'm sort of trying to think about this particular construction as if it were bottom up because I am so familiar with the bottom up and the way the sleeve caps are shaped, um, you know, and with set in sleeves and, and all of how that works. Um, what I'm seeing here is this bit of sharp increase at the beginning, which is kind of like the way you decrease and bind off the top of a sleeve cap, and then um, less frequent increases, so kind of making the top of that sleeve cap, and then you have more frequent inc increases, which are your raglan increases, and then this cast on of eight stitches. So if you're thinking bottom up and you're thinking about creating a sleeve, those eight stitches that we cast on are equivalent to the two sets of four stitches that you would bind off as you begin your sleeve cap. And then you would have your fairly rapid decreases, maybe another decrease of two stitches, maybe binding off two more stitches and then every row and then every other row. So if you're thinking about that way that a sleeve cap in a classically constructed set in sleeve sweater would be designed, it's sort of easy to see how this kind of works, right? So that, that's, that's the way my mind works. I know people who have started knitting and all of their sweaters have been top down. This makes perfect intuitive sense. But for me, again, this is a bit of a learning experience. And I would say that not all top-down sweaters are created equal. And if, if I had to rank them, I like this one very much. Okay, so let's look at how we would be um, taking those stitches for the sleeve off. Okay, I have this handy. So yes, A Man Called Ove was good, and I read Bear Town and the sequel to that. I thought they were great. And this one, Anxious People, it's one of those books that you, <laughs> I'm listening to it because I love aud audiobooks while I'm knitting. That's like my favorite treat. Um, but you know, you're listening to it and part of it, you're just so annoyed. It's so incredibly annoying. The people are so, so annoying and you can't stand them and you think, oh my gosh, they're annoying. I want to kill them. <laughs> and he is just, the author is just such a master in that he brings the backstory of those people to light in this beautiful and gradual way. And you begin to find them less and less annoying and more and more endearing, which I, I sort of think is how, how life is generally. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay, so let's look, let's look at this process because this is super easy. And like I said, I know most of you have already done this for very many things, but I would be remiss if I didn't go over it. Okay, so here is my my messy space. Okay, so this is, we're just gonna pretend that this is the, the sweater that we've been working on and these are the sleeve stitches, okay? So you're gonna work over to that, that first marker and then all of your sleeve stitches, you're gonna slip off. You can slip them off onto a piece of waist yarn, onto a purl string, onto a circular stitch holder, whatever you want to do. I'm just going to take most of these off and I find it easier to slip them to a small circular needle. So that's what I'm doing here. All right. 
So now those are my sleeve stitches that I'm not going to pay any attention to at all anymore. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that same cast on. I'm going to cast on four stitches. And then this is where we put a stitch marker. I'm sure I have a stitch marker here, don't I? Yes. We put a stitch marker because that's going to become the new beginning of the round. And then we're going to cast on four more stitches. Okay. And then we are simply going to come over here and continue on rejoining in the round. Maybe cast on, I'm going to do that little trick, cast on one extra stitch and bring that over. And rejoin. Sometimes, and I don't know that it's exclusive to this particular method or whatever, but when you are working in the round, sometimes this join right here seems to be kind of gappy. There seems to be like a little hole in that. And I believe that part of that is just the gap that forms when you're doing the, um, the increase you know, the, the cast on. So I'm thinking that doing that little trick of adding the extra stitch and, and knitting it together might eliminate that. We will see. All right, so now you're just gonna be, you're in the round again, and here are your sleeve stitches, and then here is the rest of your, your body stitch. All right, let's see. Rita says, I put mine in pearl strings. Yes, we have these wonderful things at the shop called pearl strings. They're these tiny uh, neoprene tubes. They're not really plastic. They're stretchy, rubbery kinds of things. And they're great because they're, of course, they're hollow. They're tubes. Um, and they stick right on the end of your needle. And then you can just, uh, you don't have to put your stitches on waist yarn and then take them off of the waist yarn. You can just put your needle right onto that tubing and then knit from it exactly the way it is. So it's a huge time saver. And we do have those in the shop if you like them. I like the Pearl Strings brand because they are distributed by a, a fellow yarn store owner that I'm in a Facebook group with. So I love that. Okay. Good. Good. So, so this is fun. And then there is nothing after that for like, for forever, right? So after you've got your stitches onto the, uh, your sleeve stitches onto holders, you are just going to town. And I know that this is part of the reason people love the in the round knitting, um, because now you're in the round and you're just knit, 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 knit. Some people find it super boring. I personally don't. I mean, I love stock knit. I love to purl. I love to knit. I love to purl. So we'll see. This is going to be one of just a handful of sweaters that I've actually worked in the round. Um, so I think, I think it'll be good. It is nice to have something sort of mindless to just knit, knit, knit on until it's long enough. And I can see that another benefit is that you don't have to worry about the front and the back being the same length because you know they're going to be because you're working them at the same time. Um, so, you know, maybe this top-down thing is growing on me a little bit. Not all of them, not all of them, but this one in particular, I think. So, plus having that beautiful Rowan Kid Silk Haze on top of that gorgeous Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo is just so yummy and delicious. So, all right. So, Anne said two inches past the join. When you say that, Anne, is that two inches past the join at the neckline or two inches past the join at the sleeves? For the divide, that would be the divide for the sleeves. My mistake. So, anyway, I rarely knit two of the same thing, and I've never knit two of the same thing at the same time before. So this is this is new for me. So we'll see. We will see. 
Any thoughts on what might be a fun next project? Do, I'm enjoying the knit alongs. It's a, kind of fun to do. So I would be I would be interested. I think I had promised Ellen that we would do is it the Wednesday sweater? Maybe it's the Wednesday sweater. Maybe it's the Thursday sweater. I can't remember. But it's another petite knits, and I have chosen um, Amelie by Ilamani, which is an incredibly beautiful um, blown yarn where the the tube is made of silk and the fibers blown in are alpaca. Oh my gosh, it is the loveliest, silkiest, softest, and lightest yarn ever. It's so beautiful. Um, anyway, so that is going to be, that'll probably be the next knit along that we do in case you're interested. So super fun. Okay, well, does anybody have any questions or comments or book recommendations or anything that they would like to share? Let's see. Amy, like petting a kitten's tummy. Yes, exactly. I love that, Amy. Amy, you have such a way with words. <laughs> it's absolutely like petting a kitten's tummy. It's not ever going to scratch you, though, which is a big plus. Mm. Have you ever been scratched by a kitten or a cat who decidedly was unhappy with you petting its tummy? <laughs> some cats love it and some cats do not. Any tips for knitting the two yarns together? I'm finding the mohair a little difficult. Okay, so I would recommend that you pull them both out at the same time so that they can have a chance to kind of get married a little bit before you try to knit them because there is definitely a quality to that kid silk haze that's you know it's fuzzy and it wants to stick to the other one but if you try to keep them super separate right up until the time that you're going to knit them together they don't have a chance to kind of get stuck to each other so I would say go ahead and pull out a good bit of the yarn you know several yards of it and let let it just kind of mat together. Um, I will show you that on mine. So I have this, here's the tail of mine. Can you see that? There's the tail of my yarn. And it's been hanging out here since I, well, obviously since I cast on. And they're, they're pretty well stuck together. I mean, I would have to really work at getting them apart. But you know, further, further on down, they're very separate. So I would say just sort of pull it out and kind of mush them in your hands a little bit, you know, as you knit. It helps if your hands are a little bit sweaty. My hands are always cold, so <laughs> that's not helpful. But, but just letting the stitches, the two strands together kind of get to know each other a little bit. And uh, I think they'll be less likely to live separately as you work them. And be, be mindful. I will tell you that I definitely missed one of the stitches. It's not such a big deal if you, one of the strands in my stitches, I missed one of the strands in my stitches. It's not a big deal if you miss the mohair, but I had caught the mohair and left the, um, the Noro, which was bad. I had to go back and pick that up. Fortunately, I hadn't, you know, the stitches were still there, but still it was a pain. So yeah, you do want you do want to be mindful of that. And it's, you know, it doesn't hurt every every so often to kind of really have a look at your fabric, not just from the front, but from the back, cuz the back is where you're going to see if you've slipped a stitch. You're not going to see it from the front, but from the back you will see a bar across and that will tell you that you've slipped a stitch. So, I hope that helps. What should our goal Point in the pattern be for next time. So what I was going to do, we have two weeks to work the body. I thought go ahead and work the body all the way down to the twisted ribbing and I thought we would do the twisted ribbing. If you get to that place where you're ready to do the twisted ribbing and you still have plenty of time left between now and when we meet again, not next Monday but the following Monday, go ahead and do your sleeves because they are all super easy. You know, they are just, they are just working down and decreasing, which you know how to do, right? So just be working, 
working even. And I definitely wanted to keep these, take these two weeks to get anybody who was newer or maybe a slower knitter to give them a chance to kind of catch up and make sure we were all kind of sticking together. Like the mohair and the uh, noro should be sticking together, right? <laughs> all right. So is there anything else I can do for anybody? Any questions, any help, anything you need? If so, you guys know where to reach me. If you have not already subscribed to my channel on YouTube, please do that. Click the little bell and that will tell you when I go live. And um, yeah, so that would be very cool. And you, and you can sign up for the newsletter too, which is great, which is where I share all of my information about everything that is happening in the shop and online. And you always get the the first and the best if you're on the newsletter list. So please do. There's a link in the description of this video where you can um, where you can join the newsletter list. So okay, until next time, keep knitting, create something beautiful, and make that beautiful progress on your terrazzo sweater. I will see you not this coming week, but the following week. Thanks for being here. Good night. <laughs>